So as you probably know from my Trains of Team Fortress 2 video, TF2 is one of my all-time favorite games. I've been playing since March 30th, 2013, and I don't really see myself stopping anytime soon. Anyway, I was re-watching some of the official SFM videos like the Meet the Team series, Expiration Day, and then the End of the Line update SFM, which is what I'll be focusing on today. If you're unfamiliar with it, it was a community-driven update from December 2014, with the highlights being new cosmetics, along with an SFM animation which you should go watch if you haven't already. There was also a new map called Snowplow with the train from the SFM being the centerpiece, but it was added separate from the end of the line update, instead in the gunmetal update. The end of the line update was received with mixed feelings, but I'm not here to talk about the update, more specifically this part in the SFM. Did you notice how Heavy stopped an entire train with just his body? I mean, sure, he was uber charged for most of it, but seriously, this sandwich eating Russian with a PhD in Russian literature just stopped a fast moving full size train with his body. I got to thinking though, how much weight did Heavy exactly have to stop here? You should know by now I'm a rail fan, so that sent off some light bulbs in my head to calculate how much weight this train was packing for Heavy to stop it. So, let's get right into it. Like I mentioned earlier, in my Trains of Team Fortress 2 video, I compared the various locomotives, rolling stock, and railroad infrastructure of TF2 to their real-life counterparts. In that video, I said the locomotive from End of the Line seemed to be based on an EMD GP60M, which was used exclusively by the Santa Fe and later BNSF Railway since 1990. With that said, the locomotive weighs in at 282,000 pounds. Now for the train's consist. The first car on the train is a large gondola car, seemingly based on a 4,000 cubic feet Thoreau gondola used in the United States and Canada. While empty, they weigh in at 59,500 pounds. Their load capacity is 200,000 pounds, and considering it's loaded in the SFM, I'll add the empty car weight plus load capacity equaling 259,500 pounds. Next is the box cars. Because of all the different boxcar variations out there, I decided to measure the in-game boxcar's length with very scientific methods. The soldier is about 6 feet exactly in height, so with 7 soldiers, I figured the boxcar is based on an American 40-foot design. Many different variations exist of these, but I'll just use the Pullman-built PS1 design as a reference. These were built between 1947 and 1961, and were frequently used into the 1980s. The PS1 boxcar weighs in around 43,400 pounds when empty. Now for the tank cars. Using the same method from earlier, this is just about a 36 foot long tank car. These were often built by the Union Tank Car Company, American Car and Foundry, and General American Tank Car, with smaller versions like these being used between the 1910s into the 1960s. Given TF2 setting around the late 1960s and early 70s, the closest bulkier example of the time I could find is about 41,400 pounds when empty. The tank cars explode at the end implying they're loaded, so the load capacity of one of these tank cars is 100,000 pounds, adding up to 141,400 pounds. Next is the flat cars with logs and containers on them. It looks to be about 41 feet in length and weighs in at probably 32,190 pounds based on this Northern Pacific Railway design. There's way too many flat car variations to choose from, but I figured this one seemed fine enough. With a standard 40 foot intermodal container weighing in at 8,000 pounds, this makes the container flat cars weigh in at 40,190 pounds. Okay, that's all the freight cars in the concess individually weighed, so how about the full train? Before I get into that though, I'm not going to include the weight of the rubber ducks, logs, and the bombs because I'm really just more interested in the obvious weights rather than guessing the average log weight, how many rubber ducks and bombs are here, because no matter what, Heavy still stopped a moving train with his body and it's a lot of weight, so I don't really think it matters all that much. Anyway, there wasn't really one clear shot of the whole train, and it seemed like cars went missing or outright replaced from scene to scene sometimes. So, from various clips I gathered, there's one loaded hopper car, 15 box cars until Scout accidentally decoupled one of them making 14 box cars, 3 loaded tank cars, and 3 flat cars, one with logs, two with containers. When Heavy comes into contact with the locomotive and its 21 car train, that's a total weight of 1,685,870 pounds, or simply 1.6 million pounds of train that the heavy weapons guy is stopping by himself. Sure, while he is uber charged and he is invincible, outside the game that is anyway, don't try to stop the train as a heavy medic pair on your own. I still think this is pretty impressive. 
For comparison, the Union Pacific Railroad's big boy locomotive, the largest locomotive ever built, weighs in at 1.2 million pounds. Heavy is stopping a fast moving train that weighs more than a big boy locomotive and lived even after the Uber beam disconnected. Now, I could have gotten into the very specifics, like approximating the speed of the train, how many pounds of force, and whatever else, but I'm not good enough at math or really want to do any more math than I already have, so in the end, Heavy is one strong dude to say the very least. Welcome to the end of the video. I just thought this would be something fun and different to do compared to my usual videos, and I always like being able to combine my love for gaming and trains, so I had some fun making this. If there was anything I messed up or miscalculated, please feel free to correct me because I might have messed something up, I don't know. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.